Welcome back, my fellow uh, nerds, geeks, and pop culture enthusiasts. I do, I do, I do love my geekdom, and I, and I do love my pop culture, as you can see. Family Guy, Justice League, and also being someone who's a champion of, um, who champions comic books and the art form and the literature in it and the great storytelling and all that is um, that is open to us in our universe of entertainment. So the biggest news right now out of Disney and Marvel Studios is Leslie, uh, who's set to write and act in Disney Star Wars new series, series about a kung fu fighting uh, female in an alternate version of alternate universe of the Star Wars. Uh, franchise. Now, this is this person is someone who actually hates white men. <laughs> Again, I, I I I I kind of really wonder about the character of these people that they, Disney keeps bringing in. Uh, they brought in someone to write Kamala Khan, uh, the showrunner for that, who is very anti-white, um, and she's actually Indian. So I guess in, me being an Indian can say that she's a racist and be okay with it. Even though I found that uh, on Facebook when I called out, um, I made a statement about an Indian person who arrived off the plane who wasn't concerned about self-isolation in New Zealand. And Facebook blocked my post because they thought I was probably a white guy making a racist comment. It wasn't racist. All I said was, hey, Look at this dude. Even an Indian doesn't care about our citizens being affected, infected by the pandemic or by the beer bug. And I was like quite angry at seeing someone being on t national TV, on the news, being interviewed, getting off the plane saying, what do you think about the self-isolation things? Oh, I don't really care. I, I don't really care about what's going on in your country. I don't care about this pandemic. I'm just going to go do my thing. And I'm like, put him back on the plane, check him back out. and or have the police make sure that he's in self-isolation. That's not racism because, hey, I'm calling out my own people, right? And this is a thing with what happens with Disney. Disney has lost the plot. They're hiring someone to run a show. Uh, they've hired a new person, right, who's actually the former assistant to Weinstein, <laughs> that monster of a man who basically sat for decades uh, with the Weinstein group, who everybody knew. If you wanted to get in the business and get on a TV show or get in a movie, be out there, you had to lay down with the man. Everybody knew this. Oprah knew this. Oprah was his best friend. So if you've got a personal assistant, she's basically aware of what's happening. And now they brought, into her, brought her into Lucasfilm. Well done. So, of course, everybody's worried about this because, well, you know, and she's someone's actually caught up woman, specifically white woman, as itches for not standing up. Well, you know, I don't, this is my, you know, you got to look at and wonder what is, what are they up to? So next thing up, they've got a new Disney Plus is continuing to expand the Star Wars galaxy. A new live-action Star Wars series is being developed for the streaming service by Russian Doll co-creator Leslie Headland. I Headland like will write and act as showrunner for the project, which is said to have a female-centric point of view on the galaxy far, far away. And it looks like a deal was actually concluded several months ago, seeing as Headland had even attended the Los Angeles premiere of Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker back in December. Headland's past credits include two Emmy nominations last year for Russian Doll, the Netflix series starring Natasha who keeps dying and reliving her 36th birthday. The show received 13 nominations in total and That's won good. three awards. Headland is also known for writing and directing films Sleeping with Other People after making her feature debut with the 2012 comedy Bachelorette. The new Star Wars series just projects in the works at Disney+, Plus, which now has season two of The Mandalorian primed for an October release, and is also developing a Diego Luna-led Rogue One prequel series, as well as a show starring Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan Kenobi. For more Star Wars news and updates, head to THR.com. So that's from The Hollywood Reporter. Now, I want to I uh, show you something 
that I think you're going to find very interesting. And uh, this is about that show, right? And this is from, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, he's got his own YouTube channel. His name is John Campion. And he basically has a go about fan, fans, right? He, he has a go at fans. And, um, and his co-host, who's female, has a different opinion. Right, let's have a look. Listen, listen, listen. I can already hear the man babies uh, crying about, why is it female centric? There's an agenda. Listen, let's just put that to bed, and not touch on this again, shall we? They've already got three other series coming that are all male lead. Okay, that means right now, if, if this comes out and it's only four shows, that's seventy-five percent of their male lead. They got one that's going to happen to be a female lead one. Deal with it and just move on. So, can we move on from that? Thank you. Um, you're going to be a little surprised about what I have to say, though. Okay. <laughs> I really, really loathe Sorry, the descriptor of female led. Um, you know, I, I, because and and here's why. I love the idea of a predominantly female cast i think it's fantastic but my problem is why are you only releasing the fact that it's a female-centric show oh and they're gonna be doing some kung fu or whatever like why say that like if you like can you read me the headline again except take out female-centric and just put male-centric um let me see sorry here. you have to you weren't planning on going back yeah, i wasn't planning but on the going point back is, show, yeah. you know, the point is these other shows that you talk about that are predominantly male driven nobody says oh we have this upcoming series we're not going to tell you anything about it but it's going to be predominantly men you want to watch like that's exactly what it's saying and like for me yes i want to see shows with more women obviously but you don't have to say that's the selling point and she's right, right? And you'd think that she would be the one who's saying, yeah, 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 yeah. But she's, she's got a really good thought out thing. That's exactly what we've been saying as Tell fans forever. Tell me a little bit about the story. Make me fall in love with the story. Because ultimately, if the show, because also, ultimately, I'm gonna finish that thought. Ultimately, if, it fail, if the show does fail, then it looks like it failed because yes. it was female centric, not because of a million other factors that it could mm. have failed by. And also, when the first news of it is is female centric, I know that there's a lot of people, not just men, but also some women named Karen, who also are just going to be like, all right, I'm not interested in that. I'm tuning that mm. out. Same thing happened with um, Harley Quinn. Birds of Prey. Same thing. You know, it's basically saying, look, you're a consumer, consume whatever we're going to put out. Not that it's a good story. We, that's not what uh, it's about. Who's in it. And you're going to market it to this is what thing. But if it fails, oh, it's because of uh, men don't like it. It's never the case. Right. Because I love a lot of um, films like Aliens, Wonder Woman. Um, you look at um, uh, Underworld. You look at all these amazing franchises, that zombie one, you know, with umbrella thing. I can't remember the name of it right now. You can't market it as a female or male centric. That's just a bad marketing ploy. Uh, Jerry Conway. I had a I had an issue with Jerry Conway about uh, about Birds of Prey. He was saying, you know, why aren't teen, teenage boys going to watch this? Oh, uh, because they don't want to support female led movies. It's like, dude, it's an R eighteen movie. You can't send teenage boys to it because it's not it's it's they can't they aren't allowed to watch it. And this is the thing, like I always go on about the story because the story is the most important thing. You can put whatever people in the characters in whatever role, but you gotta tell people what the good thing about the story is. Is it a good story? What is it about? What's a plot about? It's you know, is it worth it? You know, like I, I love I love Leslie Headland's um, uh, Russian Doll. I thought it was a great show. Um, actually, my um, brother-in-law told me about it, and then I went and checked it out. I love the whole uh, repetition. I like I like the whole Groundhog Day 
uh, scenario where you repeat this over and over and over again. And there was one recently about a teenage girl who was reliving her birthday uh, in a, oh, a party thing. But it was really, really good. I love that whole repetition thing. I think the, I, that that whole genre is amazing. And I've I've looked at writing something in there, but like you know, you can't you can't basically come out and say, hey, it's the centric, it's that centric. It's not coming out going, it's an Indian centric movie. So the only people they're going to watch it is going to be Indians, and then Indians going to go, well, it was a bad story, and then you're going to blame Indians for not watching a movie centered for them because it was a bad story. And I think this, this is the whole way, uh, they're not learning. They, they're just not learning. Hollywood's not learning about anything that's happened. Even like going so far as hiring Weinstein's assistant, like what the hell, you know, do you want more bad pub publicity? Well, they got it now. And of course, uh, laying, um, you know, f um, laying off um, 100,000 uh, employees of Disney, that's, and then giving bonuses to your, you know, to yourselves as um as lead, that's even bad press. So now you're going to go and say, well, we're going to, we're going to hire someone to do this. Uh, so with um, another latest news, good news, The Mandalorian, uh, Disney Plus is all the third season of The Mandalorian before season two airs. Now this is from um where are we? This is from bleedingfool.com. Uh, the October premiere date for season two of The Mandalorian may still feel like it's far, far away, but pre-production has already begun on, th on a third installment of the widely popular series. Variety writes, reports, sources close to production have confirmed that the creator, John Favreau, who's, of course, started the whole Marvel Universe, uh, MCU Universe, I should say, um, has been writing season three for a while and that the art de department led by Lucasfilm vice president and executive um, creative director Doug Chang has been creating concept for season three for the past few weeks. Of course, why not? You're stuck at home. What else are you going to do? Come up with, you know, all you're going to do is draw, 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 write, write, write as much as possible so that when you come out of this, you can get out there and do some stuff. Now we've just started, um, We've just started pre-production and looking into further advice for, uh, for The Mandalorian Season 3, revealed one source. In addition, another source with knowledge of the situation confirmed that the production design department began working on Season 3 on April 20th, just the, this week, pointing to the fact that the department, uh, department requires such a huge lead time to explain why the gears have started um, grinding early, really early on. News of season three began um, being in the works comes just over a month after production wrapped on season two. The Mandalorian was luckier than most shows as it has managed to round off production in early March, just before the uh, pandemic. Okay, so that's good news if you're, a, if you're a Mandalorian fan like I am. And that's all I, I like out of Disney at the moment. Um, anything they do is just rubbish. But the Mandalorian is great, and you guys know it's great because if you've watched it, you know it's awesome. All right, so, um, here we go. So, if you're hip hop, and I'm a fan of uh, NWA, uh, way back when I was a teenager, I'm 47 this year. So, back in my late teens, when I got introduced to hip hop, uh, when I went to Auckland, when I was about 17 years old, 18 years old, I got made friends who were into hip hop hard out, I got them into heavy metal. They got me into hip hop, right? But I had already been into hip hop with uh, Public Enemy. So bad news today. Jada Compton, actor, uh, star Jason Mitchell, on drug drug and weapons possession charges. The actor played portrayed Easy E, one of my favorite car um, hip hop guys. Uh, you know, straight out of um, Easy Does It, great album. Uh, the actor portrayed Easy E in 2015 straight out of Compton and was in two seasons of Lena Rice uh, show The Chi. Straight out of um, Compton star uh, Jason Mitchell was arrested on possession of drugs and weapons charges. The actor 33 was arrested on Wednesday this past week uh, in the afternoon by Harrison County Sheriff's Office in Mississippi, according to their jail records. Mitchell is facing two felony charges for possession of a controlled substance with intent to distribute and two felony charges for possession of a weapon by a felon. He was allegedly in possession of two guns, a Glock 19 pistol and a mini Draco AK-47 pistol, according to jail records. 
Mitchell was released on the same day um, around 8 p.m., although it was unclear what his bond amount was. And his rat didn't tell anything to people. People. So here we go. So the actor gained worldwide attention when he portrayed rapper Eazy-E in 2015, straight out of Compton, as I mentioned, which followed the story of the iconic NWA band, hip-hop band. Right. So he's had roles in successful TV shows and films, including 2017's Kong Skull Island, Mudbound, and The Chief. In April 2019, Mitchell was fired from his role in the move, Netflix movie Desperados before filming could begin. Quickly after, he was dropped by his agent, a manager, and lawyer, and was fired from Lena Wright's show, The Chief, according to Hollywood Reporter. The decision to fire Mitchell from the series came after actress Tiffany Boone accused him of sexual harassment. Kind of like what happened with, um, you know, with NWA guys, uh, with one of their, uh, one of, I think it was, uh, one of the um, one of the one of the reporters. There's a big outrage that came out about that. The actual reason that I got to I got let go was because Disney saw that what was happening with Desperados and they just bought Showtime, so they decided not to pick up my option. He said in the at the time, I've been on a show for what was about to be three seasons. I was nominated for an award, as you know. I was asking for money and all these different sorts of things, and they just went down for it. You know, you've got a guy who's in a huge movie like Straight Outta Compton, he's getting all these other shows, and he does what he does, and now he's arrested. He's a felon now. It's bad news, sad news. Okay. So uh, this next one is Warner Brothers decides to send Scoob straight to On Demand. So Warner Brothers has um, decided to send its animated film Scoob, Scooby-Doo, uh, straight to premium on demand versus waiting for theaters to reopen uh, once the pandemic begins to subside. The studio on Tuesday announced that the Scooby Doo prequel movie will be, be become available both to rent and to buy on the home on home uh, the home on May fifteenth for nineteen ninety nine and twenty four ninety nine respectively. The rental period is forty eight hours. And right, you know what I think about that. Sure, it's cheap to um, you know watch a video on demand, um, watch a movie on demand for 20, 20 bucks, twenty five bucks to own uh, for forty eight hours. It's not a fight, right? It's not a prepaid live action fight. It's not a game, championship game, right? It's a joke. As far as I'm concerned, this sort of thing is a joke. Okay, it's fine. Uh, you're already making pay people people to pay for your Disney Plus, right? Uh, or that's a Warner, so HBO. You're already going to release HBO Max on the uh, 28th of May, uh, if I remember right, or 27th of May. But then you're going to start charging extra for a movie on top of your $15 a month rental fee for the streaming site. I think that's not going to work. They should have held out for the movies. They would have made their budget. But okay, it's 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 a good budget plan, you know. Hey, let's watch the latest movie, but you only get to watch it for 20, 48 hours. It saves us going to the cinema. Maybe for a family, it might be about 20 uh, 30 bucks extra, depending how much it costs. But are you really, as a family, right now, gonna pay $25 for a Scooby Doo movie called Scoob? I don't think so. Prepay movies aren't gonna be the thing, uh, of course, if you're rich and you can afford it. It doesn't matter. But if you're just a normal person, everyday wage worker, but most of most a lot of people have been coming unemployed, you're definitely gonna bother. You're gonna just wait for it to come on um, as part of the um, part of the streaming site for HBO Max in a couple of months when it's just free. So I don't think it's gonna work. For uh, here we go. So as I mentioned um, earlier. Uh, stop that one. Let's go to uh, toys. So, so Disney. This has to do with uh, Star Wars. Thinking with Disney, toy executive confirms confirms lack of demand for Disney's Star Wars sequel products. This is coming from Bounding into Comics. Disney's Star Wars sequels trilogies woes continue as Diamond Select Toys president Chuck Tessera confirmed there's a lack of demand for products from the three movies. Right. As reported, uh, as previously reported by, uh, first reported by Bleeding Fool, Tessera did an interview at Rebel Scum where he discussed Diamond Select Toys acquisition of 
uh, gentle giant. Desiree was quite honest about the lack of interest in the pericle toys. Uh, when asked if there were plans to continue making a uh, product from The Last Jedi, Tessera responded, as you know, whatever was done before last year, a DST had no control over it, and, um, and Gentle Giant Limited made those decisions. But as I said, uh, development is still here guiding the brand, and we are aware of the past history. He's, he added, I will say from what we have seen, the sales for the products from 7 and 8 were not too strong. I know those movies as well as nine have their fans and those fans might say gentle giant just never did the pro right products or characters or formats and they might be correct to zero explain however we can only go by what we know for sure and the door is not close to the start uh, at the sd products and we are working on a couple of pieces for the rise of skywalker right now to Sarah does note that they're keeping a very close eye on it and listening to fan feedback. So if there is um, demand, we're, we're, um, we're happy to satisfy it. Now he's talking about, um, he goes on to say, we would very much love to make more products from the new movie. It's not like we're sitting behind our desk wrangling our hands, thinking how we can stick it to the fans and not make busts they want, and which will make us money, right? Now, we're just as of yet not, not, we, we just as of yet have not seen enough fans that would want to buy a bust having that personal affection for some of those characters basically okay you was saying there's no interest in them right as much as a select hand group of people would like it and this is what happens with a lot of movies when they do with the comic books hey we got to put this character in there we're going to chase the character it's only a select amount of people let's say 10 percent of the 100 percent that are interested in it. So you're basically the 90% who would rather like the original stuff, just not interested in 10%, so it's not worth making all that new product for people that are uninterested in buying it. And as a business standpoint, he's thinking, what about the 90% who don't, who's not gonna buy it? They're not interested. So, you know, you've got all this problem going on. Like, show John Pro is a great um, writer he's a great um, person he works overtime and he puts out as much product as possible that's quality we always want quality products we want quality stories and if you're a fan that's what you want you want a good story you look at the oval right the oval is basically modern day Star Trek if you if you haven't seen oval I tell you go watch the oval Seth MacFarlane's show is amazing it's probably the I look at the story, there's one show where they talk about uh, the um, same-sex characters uh, who have a child and they have to decide whether that child becomes a male or a female and they choose about what the world they live in. And I thought it was an amazing story. That's, a, that's the perfect Star Trek story. And then you look at what's happening with Picard, what's happening with the other uh, Discovery fans who have been like and for me i've been a fan of that for about 40 years for star trek i have the um, um, 25 year anniversary poster right there on my wall and behind it i have the 50th anniversary so i'm very excited for star trek but i'm not excited for the discovery i'm not excited for picard even though they've got all these characters in it i'll just go back and watch what's already there same thing what happens with me with um, D D um doctor who i'm not excited by the new stuff it was overdone, oversaturated with virtue signaling. And I just, after, um, I think it was about when they brought out the Indian uh, Nazi, I was like, yeah, you just pushed this too far and I'm, I'm out. So Doctor Who, you know, as much as I like Jodie Whittaker, she's an amazing actress, they just did her bad by writing crappy stories for her to act in. And they just made a mess of it. And of course, I want good stories. I love my um, Doctor Who. The last uh, 11, 10 seasons were amazing. And, you know, if people, here's the thing. Um, the previous uh, showrunner actually did a, did a live watch of one of the uh, episodes. There's more people watching that, right, a rerun, than they were watching the original, the new series episodes. How about that? The more people watching a rerun of the, one of the past episodes from the last 10 seasons than the new episode from the finale from the new one. That tells you, People are not interested in what they're doing with the character or what they're doing with the story. Go back to what's good. Go back to what's better because then we can actually put our money out. The toys aren't selling because merchandising, here's the thing. 
merchandising brings in more money than the actual product production cost. So thank you for watching, guys. That's me today. And I'll catch you around. If this is for YouTube, if you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, hit that subscribe button, and hey, uh, share it. It's a different opinion from a different country by a different person. And hopefully, um, you know, maybe I'm bringing a bit of common sense. Maybe I just have a freaking overly opinionated um, idea of things. But hey, we all have love the fandom. I want to see comic books succeed. I love the whole, um, you know, I love the whole uh, fandom. I, I love um, the whole comic book industry, but I don't like to see it go down and a burning head for trash. And same thing with Star Trek, same thing, Star Wars, same Doctor Who. So thank you for watching. Hit the subscribe button and hey, check us out. Uh, I'm Malfunction, Kakita Arnold from New Zealand. See you later, guys.